This programming is sponsored by the Dan L. Duncan Comprehensive Cancer Care Center at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. Offering comprehensive cancer care that is compassionate, personalized, and driven by clinical research. More at stlukeshealth.org slash cancer. This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, the Strength Through Joy car. The Honors College at the University of Houston presents this program about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. A while back, I was looking at some magazines from the 1940s, and I ran across what looked like an ad for the Volkswagen Beetle. Actually, it was an ad against it. It featured a drawing of four soldiers driving off in a family's car with the caption, Designed for four soldiers and a machine gun, and also for family use. This was really an advertisement for Good Housekeeping magazine, which ridiculed Hitler's plan to produce an affordable automobile. Mrs. America, the ad began, we do it a little differently around here. No dictator, no army, no government dares to tell you what style your car shall be. The same car I associate with hippies and free love was presented in this ad as the infernal machine of a joyless Nazi Germany. The truth is, the Volkswagen, or people's car, was indeed a product of Hitler's dictatorship. But what this ad doesn't tell you is that the whole idea was inspired by American consumer culture. Let's compare this ad to a poster advertising the car in Nazi Germany. First, it's called the Strength Through Joy Car. Strength Through Joy was a Nazi program to foster internal tourism for the working class. Its purpose was to co-opt workers by giving them middle-class vacations and aspirations. The poster features an attractive couple speeding down the Autobahn. The man drives contentedly while his buxom Aryan wife stands up through the sunroof, extending her arm loosely in a wave, or maybe it's the Nazi vacation salute. All jokes aside, this image of freedom and spontaneity could sell a car even today. Hitler was an admirer of Henry Ford, who is the only American mentioned in Mein Kampf. The Führer wanted Germany to develop a consumer culture that would stimulate its battered economy. The development of a car all people could afford was a top priority. Like the Model T, the car would have one basic design and would be mass-produced in such a way that working people could pay for it bit by bit. Soon they, too, could enjoy roaming through a country newly opened up by highways and motor cars. But Hitler was a lousy economist. He didn't understand one crucial aspect of Fordism. Mass production brings cheaper products to market, but only higher wages for the workers guarantee the products will sell. Hitler refused to raise wages, and the results were predictable. Workers still could not afford the people's car. Then the war came and the dream of mass motorization gave way to mass mobilization. But if you look at these pre-war posters, you see an oddly Aryan version of a very American idea. The family picnicking in the country, the boy excited his dad drives up in his new car, common people freely enjoying the beauty of their nation's landscape. Hitler never delivered on this promise, but the Beetle itself was no failure. After the war, it became the most successful car design in history. And here's another irony. The other day, I took my wife's Jetta to the dealership and saw the service department now advertises the good housekeeping seal of approval. I'm Richard Armstrong at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work. 